Welcome to our Friday Friday edition. It's always a Friday edition of Golden Black Live. Uh, and our special guest for the first segment, Tim, Tim House, uh, who is uh, obviously involved with Purdue Athletics at a very high level, senior uh, associate athletic director, oversees the John Purdue Club. And we will get to some questions with Tim. We want to thank our sponsors, Triple X on the Hill, but on the level of Purdue tradition since 1929. State Farm agent Trent Johnson at trentismyagent.com. Hilton Garden Inn when tomorrow's a big day stayed HDI tonight. Tomorrow is a big day, obviously, Tim, for Purdue football. The Boilermakers got the job done. It wasn't always pretty against Illinois, but it was effective. Now you have Minnesota coming in, a chance for a 4-1 and one start. To, just in your world, what does that mean? I mean, you've got to, uh, a fan base that's been poised, has shown up in big numbers for games one and two at home and expected to show up big numbers tomorrow as well. Uh, all things headed in the right direction, a win would help tomorrow, certainly. Absolutely. You know, a winning football program uh, makes all the difference in, in my world. You asked about our world of development and alumni relations. I mean, uh, put simply, there's more alumni to relate to yeah. <laughs> you know, or relate with uh, when the team's winning and the stadium's full. And, you know, I think it was critical this year, Alan, coming out of COVID, there was such an appetite to get back into the stadium and, and, and to maintain the enthusiasm about that by winning and um, give, given – people an exciting brand of football to watch. I mean, I know at times this past weekend, you know, it was a little slow on offense, but the defense has maintained a level of intensity that we haven't seen in Ross aid in, in, in a while here. And okay. I think people are really having a fun time watching the defense go about their business and, you know, and, 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 and hopefully the offense is going to start picking up here a little bit more. And, and if that's the case, I, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun this fall. You know, homecoming is always a special weekend uh, at the, at the university and, and it doesn't get to, uh, you know, it's an early homecoming, October the 2nd. It's a, you get to that to chance for an early fall weekend, whether looking good enough tomorrow, it sounds like it to be, have a big crowd. You know, we, you and I have talked in the past about just how, how this energy has begun uh, for Purdue athletics after, after COVID. And you saw this coming really a, a period of time ago that there was going to be a lot of pent up demand and a lot of interest and a lot of people wanting to get back in Ross age stadium. Is that, is it followed pretty much like you thought from that standpoint or how do you view that? Uh, I think it's followed as, as I thought, but maybe even exceeded our expectations. Uh, and you know, the winning helps, right? You know, we've, we've, we've taken care of business at home. Um, you know, you wanted to win that game in Notre Dame. You had opportunities, but you were competitive and represented the school well on a national stage there. And then obviously, took care of business like we're supposed to at, at, at UConn. And, um, you know, so I think that's, that's just enhanced what we already thought was going to be a great appetite to, and, and, you know, we learned a lot about Purdue's fan base throughout COVID. Um, we really, as a John Purdue club, made it a point to be more outbound than ever before. A lot of schools, you know, didn't reach out to folks, kind of wanted to give them their space. And we said, well, shoot, I, I, I bet people sitting at home would rather talk about Purdue sports than all the crazy stuff that's happening on the news. And, and, and we bet, right. You know, we, we had a lot of great conversations with our fan base. Um, they stepped up and supported obviously in a great way as, as we've all seen. Um, but they also maintained a level of excitement about what was going on, you know, and I think everybody was, you know, intrigued as to what they were going to see when they came back. And then, then it's on our student athletes to make sure to come through and, and our coaches to make sure to come through and, and, and deliver on that excitement. And they have thus far. And, and so you're just seeing steadily more and more each each week. Um, but I mean, I couldn't believe I mean, the first game against Oregon State, yeah. if you'd have told me that we'd be sitting there in the rain with a student section line wrapped around Kerry Quad just about, um, and then you get in there and the place is full and rocking in the rain all day, you know, um, I, 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 that exceeded my wildest expectations. And then it's just continued to, to impress since then. And it looks like we're going to have, have another great crowd tomorrow and we're already sold out for the Wisconsin game. Um, so we're, we're in a great place. Yeah, that was, uh, I think it has surprised me in terms of the numbers and the fact that even uh, against Illinois, 53,000, you know, within, within three or 4,000 of capacity, uh, all good signs uh, if you're a Purdue, uh, not only Purdue Athletic Department uh, employee, but also obviously if you're a Purdue fan. Yeah, the students, you know, that, that's always the old adage with the fundraising is you want to have them to have a great experience when they're in college because they, eventually they're going to find ways not only to give back to athletics, but to give back to the university. It's been impressive to me just looking at it over from the press box side and seeing this shoulder to shoulder uh, dynamic 
uh, that you saw we've seen in games one and two. Now, Saturday, it is noon, so they may be a little later coming in, but uh, you have a sense that they're going to be there and be there in big numbers. Absolutely. It's already looking like we're going to have a, a full student section again, at least on paper, you know, in terms yeah. of. Uh, like you said, I mean, it, it is an earlier <laughs> kick, but Breakfast Club starts pretty early, Alan. Yeah, so, they, they know, can get it. Yeah, so I, th- I think they'll make it. And, you know, it's it's not just great to see that from a long-term perspective of fundraising. I mean, I maintain that the vast majority of people who go to college football and basketball games are doing so to remember how much fun it was to be 18 to 22 years old. And it's a heck of a lot easier to remember it when they see the 18 to 22-year-olds. Yeah. You know, and and that student section really, I think, helps enhance the fan experience for everyone in the stadium and, and certainly the players, too. I mean, look, how many times during that second half uh, did the defense look over at the student section and start pumping them up? And I thought that was like the coolest thing ever during our game against Illinois on Saturday. I mean, they, they, our, our our players seem to be well aware that their student body is behind them. And hopefully that's a trend that continues because the guys seem to really appreciate it and feed off. Yeah, it's interesting in Ross Aid Stadium that way. It certainly is prevalent for men's basketball and Mackey. It just feeds that energy that uh, is off the chain. Uh, you, you know, you look at that. Now you had a had a had a you were hosting a very well known visitor on this past Saturday. Of course, Purdue fans saw the the uh, 2001 Rose Bowl team back. Drew Brees was around. To, had some experience. Tell us uh, tell us what you what what role you had with Drew, but also, and I know you've been around him in 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 other times. But uh, yeah, he's one of those guys. It's about as uh, true blue to Purdue as you can find. Absolutely. So um, my role uh, when Drew comes back, or and not just Drew, by the way, I mean, yeah. you had Matt Light, you had Aiken, you had right. Seth, you had, I mean, any number of you know high level Big Ten players who went on to play in the NFL. I mean, as we all know, I mean, that whole O-line played in the NFL, yeah. but particularly as it pertains to, to Drew and, and your question, you know, um, uh, our job as a John Purdue Club staff is to make sure that any of our donors, especially our VIPs like Drew, you know, uh, um, you know, have a, as best of experience as possible when they come back to campus. And that's organized for them. And and there's an extra level to it when Drew's here. You know, you 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 have to. Um, you know, it's not like he demands it. We try to provide. Yeah. Um, you know transportation, getting him where he needs to be without people mobbing him, you know, and, um, you know, try to uh, make sure that it's as easy a process and enjoyable a process as possible. So, you know, you'll, you know, we'll have someone with him at all times. And it was me this weekend, you know, making sure that um, he could get from the airport to the speaking engagement that we held with former student athletes, current student athletes and recruits. And then from there, to the locker room to give the pregame speech with the team and from the locker room to the field, um, you know, to do uh, the, the recognition with his teammates and then the honorary captain, uh, you know, role and everything that comes with that. Um, and then from, you know, he spent the majority of the first half down on the field because he just yeah. loves it. I mean, he loves Purdue football. He loves Purdue. I mean, it, it is genuine and authentic. I mean, I think that's my biggest takeaway from the weekend. Well, my two biggest are, I don't know that there's anybody who gives more of themselves for other people than Drew Brees. I mean, being around him um, doesn't say no to autographs, doesn't say no to pictures, you know, goes out of his way, particularly with kids, you know, to, to, to make people's day, you know, and, uh, and I think he understands very much the platform that's been given to him and that Purdue played a big part in that platform and loves giving back and and really loves Purdue football. I mean, absolutely loves Purdue football. Um, and, and, you know, so we spent the first half on the field because he just wanted to be down there. I mean, yeah. he, he loves Ross State Stadium. He loves being on that field. And, um, and then, you know, for the second half, went up and was able to spend time with some of, you know, with Arnett Tiller and some of her family, some, some special guests from that Rose Bowl team and really have some team bonding time. And later on that evening, um, you know, Kelly Kitchell here in town put together a get together at a, you know, kind of a pretty private location for the team and uh, was neat to get to see those guys really, you know, connect and, and, and be back together and reminisce and relive the glory years and also be very proud of the, you know, men that they've all become. You yeah. know, I think Impressive. everyone is, I'm sorry, uh, but, but yeah, but I would say that was, you know, my experience with Drew, I think it was so fun for Drew to get to show his appreciation for Purdue and his teammates um, and, and and to get to feel like a college guy again, you know, college kid again, you know, and um, he had a great experience, sent, sent me a nice note today, actually, he's saying how much he enjoyed it and how much he, he hopes now in retirement, he's able to get back to Purdue more often because he just loves being around Purdue people. 
Yeah, I think that it has always been appreciative of the fact that Drew Brees, even in some of the more challenging times of Purdue football, uh, before you were here, actually, uh, he'd come back. And uh, and that that means that's always endeared him to the fan base. Uh, not to mention he wasn't, pretty, he wasn't too bad as a quarterback, to say the <laughs> least. All right, some of the big news this week was – the more than I mean, the public announcement of the more than more than a game campaign meet, meeting its eighteen million dollar goal, and you know I think that's impressive in its own right, just because it shows a lot about where uh, the Purdue fan base, the Purdue donors have been, and the fact that uh, it, it was a need to step up, and they did just that. Anything more than meets the eye to that uh, experience, and the fact that that goal got met. Yeah, I, I think at surface level, people say, wow, that's pretty cool that, you know, they raised $18 million. Um, I don't know that everyone truly understands uh, the impact of that $18 million. Uh, I think a lot of people do. We've, we've done a lot of education, Alan, but, uh, you know, and I've said this to certain groups I've spoken to, but the majority of college athletics, uh, you know, kind of said, hey, let's take the year off from uh, fundraising. And, and a lot of people took an easy route to, you know, handling their financial woes, which everyone faced big time financial woes last year. Um, and the easy route was, hey, let's let's let people go. Let's cut sports. You know, let's let's cut jobs. You know, um, let's take out uh, massive loans to the detriment of the future of our department. You know, and I won't name names, but there's other schools in our league that definitely mm-hmm. cut teams and took out big, you know, upwards of $50 million loans, you know, and, um, and it wasn't just the big 10. I mean, it was everywhere across the board. And, you know, we kind of got together and said, Hey, let's give it the old college tribe. We, we know our fan base pretty well because we developed that Boilermaker athletic representative system. We have good personal relationships with all of our fans. Um, and, and we knew that this was the type of campaign that resonates with Purdue people, you know, I mean, Purdue people take care of their own. You know, I mean, we're, we're not into some of the flashy, bright light stuff that other schools are, but we are very much into other Boilermakers and taking care of them and taking care of the next generation. And so we liked our chances of going out and saying, hey, guys, if, if you can't help, we still love you. We're here for you. Let us know what we can do for you. But if you can, we're in a bad way and we could really use your help. And, and I think we're one of the only schools, the only school, to my knowledge, in the country that had success doing that. And because of that, um, you know, we, we have no loans and we're not cutting any sports and, and, you know, our staff's intact. And while a lot of schools are going to be spending the next four to five years, at least, you know, getting back to where they were, we're there and we're, we're focused on the future. And I think it also kind of sent, you know, a nice shockwave throughout our department um, to our student athletes and our coaches that our fans cared that much. If you look at the way we're responding coming out of the gates here, we talked about that a lot, you yeah. know, over the summer and in the off season, Hey guys, like your fan base cares about you more than any fan base in America. You have the best fans in America. It's time to reward them. You know, it's, it's time to make good on these contributions. And, and it's cool because you look, women's soccer is killing it. Women's yeah. volleyball is number four in the country. Men's golf. I saw in the golf week rankings last week was 16th in the country. Uh, football is off to a three and one start. Obviously we have a lot of momentum around the men's basketball team. They'll start up here uh, or just started practice, you know, mm-hmm. yesterday or a couple of days ago. But um you know, I mean, I think the kids and the coaches have really taken note of, of the fact that we did what a lot of other places didn't do, and they're, they're making good on those that support that they received. So uh, long-winded answer, uh, but I think the ripple effects of this are, are huge in, in their long term, too. Yeah, I think that's a that's a big factor and a good way to start to really start off the, uh, uh, the academic year and everything that's been dealt with with respect to COVID, that uh, that is seems to all be headed in the right direction. The energy level is is there. So, uh, yes, you're going to have an interesting rest of this football season. You're going to have an interesting, uh, uh, who knows, volleyball maybe a Final Four. Uh, it's always a Final Four contender. It seems like under Dave Shondell, and of course, men's basketball expected to be one of the top uh, teams in the in, in not only in the Big Ten but in the country. You know, you look at that, and uh, maybe my last question for you is just, uh, you know, trying to keep people focused and, and as you've worked with your staff to be able to, you know, get out there and, and, and pound the pavement in, in, in a pandemic time, you know, and keeping morale high, that seems to be, have been, been the tact of not only the John Purdue Club, but Purdue Athletics as, as you've gone forward. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that our job is two prong, Alan. I mean, it's to raise money, obviously. I mean, that's we're one of the few self-sustaining athletics departments in America. You know, I mean, we actually we write our scholarship check back to the university and in various other instances. We've supported other university initiatives with our funds and we're not taking any money from the state or the school. So you have to find that money somewhere because it costs money to run Big Ten athletics programs. So that's the obvious, you know, that everyone talks about. But in terms of our role with morale, it was never more evident than last year. I mean, our fan base was engaged and ready. I mean, I think there's a big reason our fan base showed out in droves and and filled up the stadium in the rain against Oregon State and have continued to do so. And part of it is absence makes the heart grow fonder. But the other piece of it is our staff has maintained a level of enthusiasm about the future of our athletics department and shared it with the fan base, you know, and, and the fan base has responded, you know, I mean, that's a, it's a two way street there. Um, But I, I, I very much feel as though if we're going to get the external world, the fans subsequently recruits, and anyone else to believe that Purdue can be great, that we can win championships, that we can um, do things that maybe other people don't think we can do. It has to start with us. Mm-hmm. You know, we we have to spread that message and we can't spread it, um, you know, in, in a fake way. It has to be authentic. You know, we have to really be all in. We have to understand our student athletes. We have to understand our coaches and their visions for the program. And we have to get excited about that. We have to share that excitement with other people. And particularly in today's society where so many of these kids, whether it's the recruits or the student athletes themselves, are going online and they're reading people's opinions about them all the time. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I wish they wouldn't, right? Yeah. You know, you wish that, that they would drown all that out. But, you know, anytime you open up your phone, you're bound to see something. Yeah. And even if you don't want to see it, your buddy sends you a screenshot of something or mm-hmm. something like that. And um, as much as we can put positivity out there and hope that it spreads, I, I think we help. I, I think we help the, the, the whole athletics department and the team. And I very much consider that a huge part of our job. You know, we, we have to be their biggest cheerleader. Yeah, well said, and uh, an important thing as part of the whole athletic experience for for Purdue. All right, Tim, thanks so much for your time. It is a busy weekend of activity. I'm sure it's pretty much nonstop from this point forward for you, but uh, we'll we'll all be watching tomorrow at noon when Purdue takes on Minnesota in homecoming in Ross Age Stadium, and it, it is a big game for the Boilermakers. Tim, thanks again. We'll look forward to always look forward to having you on there. You're always an interesting perspective, and uh, we appreciate your time very much. Awesome. Thanks, Alan. we got Cliff Averill as the honorary captain tomorrow, so keep an eye out for Cliff. It'll be good to have him back. Oh, no doubt. All right, we'll be back for segment two in a couple of minutes. Stay tuned for more on Golden Black Lock.